Hi, this is Henning from FlipNormals.com. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can model a telescope, such as the image we're seeing in front of us now, in Modo. The technique is going to be fairly uni uh, universal, so if you want to use uh, Maya, uh, Softimage, Max, or whatever, it doesn't really matter, as we're using just very simple techniques. But first, we're going to be blocking it out, just using basic cylinders, and we're going to be detailing it slightly with um, using the Bevel tool uh, and the Add Loop tool. So, uh, nothing fancy here, and let's get started. Before you really begin modeling here, I will assume that you have read the tutorial uh, we've written called Fast and Modeling in Moto, which you can find on our site flipnormals.com under uh, the tutorial section. Uh, that one will just give you a pretty thorough introduction to customizing Moto, making uh, general modeling faster, setting up scripts, configs, uh, hotkeys, useful tips and tricks for just faster modeling in general. So that's, uh, that's gonna be very handy, and I will refer to it at some points in this video. So the first thing I do when I'm blocking, or when I'm modeling pretty much anything, is that I'm blocking out my model first. So the way I do this is just by having simple primitives. This just makes it way easier to do the, the model later on, as, it, as when I first worry about the big shapes, instead of going into detail too early. So the first thing I'll do is I'll start a cylinder. <clears throat> and um, it's gonna have 16 sides and one segment. I prefer um, 16 as a number because it's divisible by 4, meaning I can then easily cut it into one fourth, work on that fourth, and duplicate it around so I then have a circle again. Very handy. I go into the front view and just drag it out. We're holding our control key. Um, then just drag it a little more. Like this. This is gonna be the biggest, the biggest part, and that's fine. Go under center, selected, and just hit all. This is just gonna make sure it's center. You can see here it's slightly off center, which might give us headaches earlier on. So just make sure you're working in the center. So, next part, we use this one. Duplicate it. Control D to duplicate. Use the W tool on W to move it with the move tool and scale down. And apologies if at some point I can't remember where you can find a tool. I very rarely actually use any kind of menu in Moto. I most most of the times I simply use hotkeys uh, or pie menus or custom menus of some sort. So I don't really go to the menus at all. The pretty much the only thing I use menus for is to create some primitives. Uh, by hitting F2, and then you can easily create stuff like this. It's pretty handy. Uh, duplicate this one again. Select it, Control D, and just drag it down on the blue axis, like this. All right, this is the last piece we're gonna do. This is gonna be the uh, the piece which has contact with your eye. This is gonna be a little tiny. There also is a bug in Moto for some reason which makes your model brighter or darker based on how you scale it sometimes. Uh, a fix for that is, you can see right, it becomes darker when you scroll down on one axis. A fix for this is to do it simply in component mode. That's gonna be fine. There we go. So this is the, the smallest piece. Uh, and there we go. All right, uh, blocking is done. Save your project somewhere and call it telescope. Uh, the first piece here is, well, it's the first piece we can do. The technique for working with something like this is revolving around adding loops and um, and using the bevel tool a lot. So the first tool we're gonna use is the add loop tool found under edge and add loop. As you can see, I mapped to the Q key and I suggest you do, if not, you don't map to the same key, at least you map to a key. So add a loop around here, add a loop around here, and I'm gonna add a, uh, a bevel here. So this is gonna be used to as a basis for a bevel. Select couple of loop polys, hit the L key for loop, and hit the B key for bevel. The bevel tool works in, in every component as well. If you're in edges, uh, polys, or verts, 
is going to work on every single one. So it's a very versatile tool. Uh, let's just undo that and do it again. All right, just hit the B key and just drag. Uh, if you drag up and down, you can have. If you drag up, you're going to just a shift. If you drag to left or right, you're going to just insert. So this is a pretty nice and fast way to work. So let's just do this. I, I'm not worried too worried about the functionality of this telescope. Uh, this is simply an aesthetic video. <laughs> it's not going to be about how a telescope actually works. So now we have a pattern which looks something like this. Hit the tab key to go into subject mode. And we have a kind of cool pattern. Next up is to make the end of it. So hit the, oh, I need wireframe on maybe. Uh, the way I put on wireframe is control W. We can also do it with uh, control one or two. Uh, apologies for that. Control one and to the right. Yeah, again, I don't use these menus, but it's, it's nice to know. Control one to the right. You can also do stuff like toggle works, toggle wires, toggle grid plane, toggle lights. Like you see, I, I, I've disabled all my lights in the scene because it's just really annoying. Uh, to have your lights when you're working. Same with cameras as well. If you have a lot of cameras, they're just going to be in your way. So that's a nice little pro tip for you there. So let's just scale down a little bit, such as this. And I just bring it in a little bit. Again, I'm not, I'm not after accuracy here, as I don't have like one reference image to look at. Scale it like this, and just move it inwards. Uh, now I'm, I'm using the handle because I want some accuracy. I want to, this to go parallel to the rest of the shell here. I don't want any kind of uh, angle on it like this. So let's uh, let's make the lens. The way we're going to make the lens is by copying uh, or copy pasting this one out of or actually cutting it out of the layer. Select select the cap here. Hit Control X. Hit the N key to make a new layer and paste it there. Move it to the front. Apologies. There we go. And I'm going to use a tool called Swiss Army Knife for Moto. It's pretty nice. It's basically a collection of super nice scripts. Uh, when you install it, you get a little menu up here, like a Swiss Army Knife icon. And you can just click, click on it and you get all these nice tools. I really recommend just going into this. I will li link this in a video below. So just click this little guy here. This is quad caps, and it basically does that. It makes quads out of your caps. Uh, so select the end here, that would the end point. You go to soft selection, which you can find under fall off and soft selection. And just set this to something like ease, ease in. This is going to give it a nice soft effect because you want this to be kind of like a curved lens. So this is fine. Just hit escape a couple of times to clear the fall off and move it down and use the thicken tool. Um, again, I mapped this to a hotkey as I recommend you do as well. If you want to only see this one here, uh, I use isolation mode, which I mapped again to alt Q. Again, find this in my tutorial. Not to do this. It's basically just a specific command you just have to pipe into um, what I believe to be the input editor. Yep. But yeah, more about that in the actual tutorial on fast and modeling model. Let's just add a couple of loops here to the side of it. Set this to symmetry, set the count to two. And now we can just add, let's sharpen up the edge a little bit. And there we go. That's that, that, that one is done. Make sure this on a separate layer by itself. There we go. Uh, I also want to add like, some kind of ring pattern around here, which is just going to look pretty cool. So select the polys here, Let's hit Alt C. Set, uh, this is just going to bring up Loop Slice, which is a really nice tool. You want to get really familiar with Loop Slice too. It's very powerful. Uh, set, the, set the count to or the mode to uniform, and let's just have 10 as a count. You can also set this to symmetry or free, uh, but for now we're just going to use a uniform. Do experiment with this though. 
It's a couple more. All right. Uh, so I, I basically just want to bring some of these up to create like a, just a cool pattern. Select one, select the next, and just hit the up arrow key on your keyboard. And Moto is going to automatically find a pattern because it's kind of clever. Hit the L key for loop. And now hit the B key for bevel. And hit shift to redo the action. And hit shift a couple of times and you get this kind of pattern. Boom. It's a really nice and quick, uh, quick and easy way to do it. Now you can see it's, uh, we, let's just say we're done with this part. Uh, it still looks a little messy or soft rather. Uh, first, let's delete this guy here or let's just bevel it in a little bit. It really looks really nasty if you have like one big part like this, you can see it a mile away. So hit the tab key, hit the B key and let's just bevel it in a little bit so that this next guy can have some room to actually enter this one. Uh, we could quad cap this one. I'll just show you what this will look like. This could look pretty sweet, uh, but there's really no need. You could also just, frankly, just delete it. Either way, uh, you're fine. It's going to be out of sight. Next up, let's just select, let's just sharpen this up now. The way I sharpen this up, or the, first of all, the reason you need to sharpen up is because this is looking way too soft now. Uh, there are several ways to do this. One being add loop tool, add loop tool here and there, and it's going to be sharp. Uh, this is a little slow though, and there is an easier way to do this on several uh, edges at once. So just undo that, double click the edge to select it. Uh, let's just do this on a couple while we're at it. This is how powerful this is. All right, selected like five edges. Hit the B key again. As the um, the bevel tool works in every component, vertex, uh, poly, edge doesn't matter. So this is basically the same tool, but it works in different component. Uh, just by dragging this now, you can see that uh, by default, this is going to be the edge sharp is going to be set to round. It's going to round and everything off, which sometimes this is what you want. Then you can just add a round level and you're going to get a nice, well, round level on it. We don't want this now. We want this to be set to sharp. The only thing this is doing is it's giving us a sharp edge. So see how quickly we can just do this on all of them? It's pretty nice. Hit the tab key again and boom, there we go. That's our first piece done. Remember to save, control S. Uh, you might also just want to add a couple loops in between here. Sometimes that makes UV mapping easier. Let's add five. Also, the wire looks a little nicer, which you might or might not care about. Next up is this guy. So do the same thing for, uh, for this. Uh, let's just uh, select two ends, go into isolation mode, which again, you can find in the faster modeling mode tutorial and just do this and you can now hit uh, you or use the, the bridge tool or hit shift B if you've set up your hotkeys the way I have, which again is listed. Uh, it's pretty nice, pretty fast, shift B, boom, you got it bridged. Uh, so let's do something similar here. Let's just add a same kind of pattern we had for the other one. A loop here, a loop there and a loop there. So now we're going to have a little, uh, we're going to have the same kind of round pattern. So select them, use the, the B key for bevel and hit it like this. Again, I'm not thinking too much about what it's going to look like. I just want something which looks kind of cool, to be honest. And it looks kind of cool. Next up, we have, I, I want like a, this, this uh, pattern again here, the one we had here. So select the loop slice by Alt C. Set the loop slice to something like seven. It's fine. Set, select one, two, and just hit the up arrow. You don't normally gain too much or you don't gain too much by selecting one. I mean, you can easily select this by hand, but if you have 200, which you very much well have in some cases, uh, this 
the smart selection feature is a real godsend because it can just really, it will just detect a pattern if you have, uh, let's just subdivide a couple times. I want, like, let's say you have now, you want to select every third, just select every third and it's gonna still do the pattern. So yeah, pretty, pretty handy. Let's just undo that a couple times. And select one, select two, select three, select four. There we go. Uh, select the L key for loop. Bevel. And let's just do this. And there we go. Same thing with this as the other one. Let's add some uh, Let's add some sharpness to this. Just, just double click an edge to uh, to uh, select a loop. And just hit B again. You, you're gonna notice the pattern is starting to form here. The bevel tool is really super nice for cylinders. And that's it. And let's just duplicate this one because it's gonna be identical. Control D. Move it over, and if you can't follow along with the speed and working with now, just don't worry about it. Just pause the video, try to repeat the steps. Maybe write down the hotkeys I'm using. Uh, it doesn't have. You don't have to match what I'm doing exactly. This is just an example. I really don't have like a strong concept or anything here. I'm just doodling around to make some it looks kind of cool. So let's just duplicate again and just scale it down a little bit. On, let's just hit the red here and just kill down. Move it a little bit in. All right. Now we own the last piece left. And this is gonna be a slightly more complicated one. It's gonna at least be a little bit different. So let's just scale this guy here. Let's just see here. I want this to be scaled down quite a lot. Uh, quite a bit. Uh, let's just here do this. Move in. And let's add a loop here. And let's just bevel it out again as well. And with time and just some practice, you're going to be doing this really quickly. Don't worry about getting your speed up right now. Just wor worry about getting it done right. Getting it done right is always more important than getting it done fast. Uh, then let's just let's just make some kind of pattern here. <laughs> Again, I have no real concept here. This is just to make something which kind of works. And old telescope. Experts will probably send me angry emails for this, but that's okay. All right, that's just so simple, but it's working for me. It seems somewhat functional. Uh, here, I want again the same pattern I've been using before. Uh, motor, motor remembers your tool settings, so if you select just loop slice, you can just click it and you're gonna remember your settings. So let's just select one, one, two, three. Hit L and just bevel it up. There we go. We'll just added a loop here to sharpen up a little bit. As I said, there are several ways of, of sharpening stuff up. And let's just add, I want one loop here as well. Hit the V key and add another bevel. Purely for aesthetics, no practical purpose at all. Double click this edge, hit the B key to sharpen up a little bit. And I kind of want a flat surface here, so let's just bring this out a little bit. Hit the B key to sharpen up. You have to be careful making it too sharp though, because nothing is really too sharp in real life. So let's just delete this again, and there's still some sharpness, some definition, but it's not too much. And select this guy here again, same technique as before. Select it, cut it out, 
hit N for new layer. Use this guy over here for quad caps. Select it. And let's use the soft selection mode. Use the right mouse button to change the fall off. Pretty nice. And it's gonna remember our presets, so don't worry about that. Some some bulge to it. Scale it up. And it thicken. Shift T for my sake. Pro possibly something else for your sake. The way you, the reason you want some thickness to this though is once you start shading it, it might look really funky if you it's only one sided. As glass really has like double sided. Uh, it's really just double sided in real life. And again, let's just save this and let's just give it a couple of loops here. Set it to symmetry, set the count to two, and now it's going to be nice and sharp. That problem is out of the way. And let's give it the same pattern I was talking about before, which I'm doing like three, four times now, I believe. Select two polys, uh, loop slice, Alt C, set it to uniform, set it to something like 10, 12, and select two polys, hit the up arrow, hit L, and there we go. So this is how you make a um, this is how you make a telescope in let's see how many minutes in 21 minutes. So it's a fairly quick process. Um, don't worry about making it look perfect or identical to what I'm doing here. Just focus on having fun in Moto. Uh, find some reference images, try to replicate them approximately, but don't worry about getting it 100% accurate. And uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank mm -hmm. you.